What's up guys, it's Tyler here, back today with the Blue Cobalt. I know it's been a minute since we've done a video on this car, but she's back up and running. You might be able to tell, you might not. I gave it a nice detail, it's looking good, and put my first tune on it, so it's still been all stock. Just learning from the best from Al, and now I'm ready to start slapping parts on. So today, we are doing our three inch Cobalt Cold Air Intake. Uh, very popular product. It's a huge upgrade on the Cobalt overstock because the stock air box is pretty restrictive. It does neck down pretty small. Um, but one of the biggest things, and the thing I'm more excited for, is the supercharger wine, because it's too quiet right now. So we'll get this together. Uh, I'll do, go step by step, hopefully make it nice and easy for you guys. It's a fairly straightforward install, but uh, you know, videos always help. So let's get to it. All right, we'll do a quick unboxing, show you guys what is in here. Um, pretty easy unit. You've got your throttle body to intake pipe coupler and some worm drive clamps. You have the one piece cold air intake uh, with the MAF pad down here. So uh, I, I've already looked at my air box. I know that the, the screws are stripped out on mine. So I do have a replacement MAF. We do sell those if you guys need them, uh, but you know, might be good to look at yours beforehand just in case, save you on shipping. Uh, in the box, we have our QR code instruction that we're trying to include with everything now. Saves paper, and most of you guys have smartphones anyway, so nice and easy. And then there is a little bit of hardware in there. It's just a uh, speed clip and nut. And then last, we have our CZP air filter. And obviously, that goes on the end. That's it. Straightforward. Let's get to it. So we got the car up in the air. Definitely don't need a lift for this. Can be easily done in your driveway. Uh, I am going to take off the bumper cover today just to make it easier for the video. You guys don't have to do that. So no worries there. Uh, we will make a how to remove your bumper cover video. It's been something we've been wanting to do. My car unfortunately is missing a lot of the underbody uh, plastics. So we're not gonna do it on mine, but we'll start here, show you guys where to go. Uh, installation is very straightforward. Remove the old stock air box and then put the new one in. Uh, there's only one point where you have to drill uh, for a mounting location. Otherwise, fairly straightforward. So before you get to taking the stock air box off, you will have to uh, loosen up your fender liner here and then uh, pull that off to the side. So as you can see, I do not have much fender liner left. Uh, the whole bottom portion is gone. Part of this is gone. That'll have to be remedied. Um, this is a good thing to note. Check your guys' fender liners because this is a fender well intake. If you're driving around and you hit a big puddle, you're gonna suck up water if you don't have fender liners like mine. Uh, fender liners can be had online new still, I think. Uh, otherwise, pop into your junk, local junkyard. It doesn't. There's no SS specific one. Just get a coupe one, and it'll be almost close enough. Uh, the SS just has a little bit portion on the bottom. But so you need to get in here. There are three seven mil screws here. You'll likely have a seven mil back here as well, uh, and then you're going to have a couple seven mils underneath here where it supports on the bumper. Obviously, I don't have those, but. Is all I can show you. So just whip these ones out real quick. Like I said, on yours, you're going to have to remove them down here and then a couple here as well. And then what you can do is just pull that fender liner back. Uh, they're flexible, so if you want to, you can pull it all the way back and zip tie it up here. But just something that's out of your way so you can access the stock air box in here. It is a fairly large unit, uh, so it does have to come out the bottom. There's no way it's going back up out the top. So I'm gonna take this bumper cover off, make it a lot easier for you guys to see, and then we'll get to removing this box. All right, so now that we have the bumper off, you can see the stock air box here. 
uh, filters in there and it kind of snorkels up through the top. So decent design, but where your restriction comes in is your main tube here is quite thin. So because with our intake, it's a good bit larger, it's three inch, it is gonna be a tighter fit. So that is one thing, it can be a little bit tricky, but so we gotta take the stock intake off. Uh, there's two pieces, this top one, and then the kind of snorkel air filter assembly down below. Top piece is easy, bottom piece really isn't too bad. You don't need a ton of tools for this job. Really just, uh, you'll need a drill and a quarter inch drill bit. That'll be for the mounting. Uh, you'll need a pair of pliers for this PCV hose here. You'll need a flat head for the, uh, the, worm, the stock worm drive clamps. Then you will need a seven mil, like I mentioned, getting the fender liners off, and then a 10 mil to unmount the stock air box. So before you go removing this, uh, you'll wanna start up top here. Uh, there is a worm drive clamp just under your coolant bottle. Just go ahead and loosen that bad boy up. Then on the throttle body side, same, same. You're gonna have another worm drive. Uh, then you just need a pair of pliers to get that PCV off. With these cars getting older, it might not be a constant tension clamp there. It might just be a little worm drive or a zip tie or whatever. But you'll remove that, twist it off the sock intake, and set that aside. Now, I always talk about this in all my videos, but keep your stock parts, guys. People seem to get their new parts and start disassembling everything, and then they just throw them away. And then if there's anything wrong with your order, which hopefully there's not, but mistakes happen, if there's ever, any, ever anything wrong, then you can send us the part back, throw your stock stuff back on for the meantime, and go from there. Now, obviously we know uh, sometimes stock parts break, so there are certain situations, but keep your stock parts at least for a little while after install. Make sure everything's running right, then toss them or sell them or whatever you know you may want to do. All right, so now that we have the top portion off, we're going to take the bottom portion off. Um, you have four things to undo. You're going to have your mass sensor, which is tucked up here. This part will be a little bit difficult if you don't have your bumper on, but you can snake your hand up in there and get it off. Uh, normally, there's a little kind of clip before the clip, I guess you could say. Uh, I'm sure there's a more technical term for that. but. Uh, it appears that mine is gone, so normally I'd take my pick tool and pop that out, but you just push and remove the math sensor harness there. And then what you're gonna have is uh, three 10 mil bolts. Uh, one of mine has snapped off, so I don't really need to remove it, but it's there. So there's one on the back side here, two on the front side. Uh, those are all gonna be 10 mils and just remove them. Good old 15 year old Michigan cars. <laughs> Snapping plastic. All right, so to remove this, you're gonna wanna pull out to get it off those studs. And then you're just gonna have to finagle it down. And there we are. Let's see, that's not really pretty there. So ours is three inch all the way through. A uh, little bit nicer design. The stock one wasn't, wasn't too bad like I mentioned, but um, I mentioned earlier in the intro, because these are old and especially in Northern climates like this, my screws are actually rusted right to the math pad and the box. The box is plastic, but it's rusted together and I couldn't even get this one off. So I got a replacement sensor, makes it a heck of a lot easier going back together uh, or else I'd have to drill that out. I don't wanna deal with that, so. Plan ahead. So before you toss the new one back in, you're gonna want to either remove the MAF sensor out of your old one and put it in, or like I said, grab a new one. One thing that a lot of people don't know is that MAF sensors actually have a uh, little arrow, and that's gonna point the way the air is flowing across the mass. So like on these old card style, that point is gonna go where the air is gonna come in. 
your arrow is going to point towards the engine. So that just slides in there. You'll bolt that back down and then toss it in. Now that we have the stock air box out, we've got the MAF installed on the new pipe. Uh, I did go a little fast, I'm sorry. Uh, you will want to remove your headlight bucket. That's gonna make things a lot easier because you're gonna mount and drill right here. And when you're installing the intake, you can definitely tell where it's tough for a lot of people. You don't have a lot of room to work with. This hole is quite small. So removing everything out of the way to be able to finagle that pipe in is gonna make it a lot easier. So uh, removing the headlights easy. You guys may or may not have done it before, but it's basically four bolts up top here, uh, two in the body, and the whole bucket comes out. You'll just unplug your headlight. Uh, you may still have the ones connected down here to get the bucket fully out, but it'll just come out as one unit if you want. Uh, I've got mine over off to the side. But so now that that's out, we're gonna start installing the new intake. Um, to make things a little bit easier, because it is a tight fit, what I did was uh, you can remove this 10 mil nut on the top of your coolant tank. And while it doesn't give you a ton of wiggle room, it does give you some. Uh, and you know, this you'll want all the way back there. The coupler, easy enough. It's gonna slide right on your throttle body. Uh, there is a right and wrong way. It looks very close, but there's one side that is a little bit longer. And um, once you get it on there, you'll be able to tell which side goes where, uh, and then obviously the worm drive clamps are gonna go there. A bit of an oddity on my car, obviously all LSJs were manual cars. Uh, mine, at some point, someone broke the PCM tray and they replaced it with an, one from an auto car. So normally that would have a TCM here. So it's pushed this a little bit farther out. So that might interfere a little bit with our PCB hookup and the way it sits, but, um, you know, yours shouldn't be like that. So what you're gonna wanna do, and I have a bunch of silly wrap on mine, but I put this crash wrap on here because your body line in there is pretty sharp. And while the, it is powder coat, it can flake off a little bit easier. So there's a specific science to getting this in. So what the way the intake sits in the car is like that. And this is where your bolt goes, where we're gonna be drilling in a second but you will need to test fit this before you drill. So I wrapped it all up. We're gonna show you how to go in. I'm gonna remove it, I'm gonna mark, drill my hole, and then we're gonna do final install. So what you're gonna wanna do is kinda flip it 180 and then rotate it. Uh, so your PCV nipple is gonna be facing out and you'll start by slipping that in the hole here. So you'll get it in. And then as you're working up, you're gonna be rotating the whole thing here. So it will get a little tight at one point, but you should be able to get it up and over. And we can see here, that's where you're gonna to need to mark, but make sure that you can connect your coupler first. So obviously my PCV is a little tight there. Get it just seated in the coupler or very, very close. Mine might be a little tough from all this crap I've got on it. As you watch me struggle. There we go. So we're in there. That is tight against mine, like mentioned. But, so we're gonna go get it. If you can or need to, hook up your PCV. And then, like I said, it is tight, but that's what we get for going with a larger intake. So I've got enough meat here for my coupler. I've got that on the back side. Make sure you're not hanging way off. You're obviously gonna need to tighten that around the throttle body. So you wanna make sure you get everything lined up as well as you can. 
And then once you're here, I think I am good. I'm gonna go ahead and mark my spot. Hopefully your car isn't as rusty and nasty as mine, but that's what we get for living in Michigan. So I'm gonna take this back off. Then this guy's gonna come back out. Again, rotating. All right, we're out there. So now we're gonna grab our drill, our hardware, drill that real quick, and then we'll mount it. All right, so went ahead and drilled my hole. Uh, it's just a quarter inch drill bit that you'll need. And then slid the speed clip on there. So what we're gonna do now is do the final installation. So. We'll grab our pipe again. Work it back in. Getting a lot faster at this now. <laughs> okay. So I need to make sure this is up and over that. And then it may be easier to pop this coupler on off the throttle body. Obviously, I'm gonna have to cut this back and then get it seated down there. So let's go ahead and get some of this off. Definitely a tight fit. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get the PCV connected, which depending on the age of your car, may be a little tough, because this rubber might be a little tough, but thankfully mine wasn't too bad. All right, so got that there. Seated on the throttle body. And you're definitely tight through here. But connected everywhere. That's good, good, good. My speed clip moved a little. We'll move that back. And then it's just a 10 mil to get this seated down here. And you don't have to go ham on that. Obviously you want it tight, but uh, otherwise we're secure there. Make sure all your points are good. Then you're gonna obviously tighten up these worm clamps, plug in your mask, and you're good to go. Last but not least, we've got the new filter. For your guys' information, we do use oiled air filters, so uh, they are pre-oiled. They don't need any more going on. Uh, and if you ever need to re-oil them, just buy a K&N re-oiling kit. Works the same, same. And there we have it. Uh, a little more technical than you might think, but pretty much a straightforward install. Uh, from here, I'm gonna put my headlight bucket back in, and then obviously for myself, Put the bumper back on for you guys. Make sure to get your splash shields all tightened back up. Uh, we will have soon a ZGP version of K&N's Hydro Shield. Uh, so we're, we're getting those 
manufactured up uh, so they fit all of our different air filter sizes. So we will have something for you guys who you know, may not have your fender liner or just, are just a little more concerned about water. Obviously, you still want your fender liner in there, but that'll help just in case you do get a little bit of water on it. So we're all put in, we're fitting good. Uh, a tune is not necessary for an LSJ intake, but it's definitely advised. Um, being larger, you're gonna flow a lot more, uh, but your fuel trims will keep you in check. So if you do need a tune, hit us up. I do the PCM flashing for LSJs now, and then Al does uh, your full remote tunes, which is always the way I recommend. But for now, we got the intake on. I'm gonna put everything back together and then go enjoy my blower noises. We'll catch you guys next time. Peace.